So picture this, you're out at a bar, maybe a party, or some social event. Or hey, you're just at work, and there's this woman in your office that you've been eyeing. You want to talk to her, but you're not sure how to break the ice. Right? Well, let me tell you something. I once heard this theory. If you make the first move and hit on a woman, nine times out of ten, she's going to think you're desperate. Yeah, she puts up that guard and reject you. But check this out. If she's the one who makes the move first, if she hits on you, then you've got the upper hand. You can play it cool, chill, and let her do the chasing. So how do you make that happen? How do you get her to make the first move? Well, that's what we're diving into in today's video. Stay tuned. So here's the deal. Being a natural introvert myself, I'd rarely find the courage to walk up to a random girl at a bar or a party. Instead, over the years, whenever I spotted a woman I was interested in, I'd try to figure out ways to get her to approach me. And let me tell you, there are some perks to this approach. For one, you don't have to summon this enormous amount of courage that some guys just don't naturally have. But here's the real kicker. Even if you do have the guts to approach her, when she's the one making the move, everything just flows smoother. Her defenses aren't up, she's not on guard, and because she's the one who initiated things, she's already invested in talking to you. So you don't feel that same pressure to keep the conversation going or to constantly entertain her. It's a win-win. Let's dive into it. I want to talk about five ways I've discovered that can up your chances of her making the first move. But before we jump into those five things, let me make something clear. These tactics are all about giving a woman who's already kinda interested in you that extra nudge to make that initial move. They're not magic spells to have random women flocking to you as you walk down the street. No, they're just ways to take a woman who's already got a bit of interest and give her that little push she might need to break the ice with you. Let's dive into it. The first one I want to talk about is probably the most powerful move. I picked up on this one after reflecting on all the times women approached me and struck up conversations. It's all about baiting her into eavesdropping. Here's the thing. Almost every time over the years when I was out at a party or a bar and a girl or a group of women interacted with me or my friends, this is pretty much how it went down. We'd be chatting about something, having an interesting conversation and they'd kinda just make their way over. Eventually they'd chime in with an O oh, and include themselves in the conversation. It's like they couldn't resist jumping in once they heard something intriguing. Let me break it down for you. When I talk about baiting, I mean you gotta be mindful of what you're discussing. If you're sitting with your buddies and chatting about which girl at the bar you want to hit on or maybe dissecting last night's sports game, it's going to be tough for a woman to chime in. But here's the trick. If you're having a more casual or light-hearted conversation, that's when she's more likely to ease up and join in. I learned this back in the day during the pickup artist phase when they talked about something called opinion openers. Basically, it's about asking questions that spark some gossip or discussion. You know? Like who lies more? Men or women? or whether saying I love you when you're drunk really counts. These are the kind of topics that get women interested in wanting to jump into the conversation. On top of that, if you're the one making the move, those are some solid tactics to go with. But let's say you're in the midst of a conversation at a bar or a party or any social gathering for that matter. You gotta be mindful of the topics you're discussing. If you're chatting about stuff like that, it's super easy for women to slide right into the conversation. You'll hear them throw in lines like kissing is cheating, and you've got yourself a segue to pull them in and keep the conversation flowing naturally. Let me break it down for you. Baiting is basically when you're out with your buddies and you think to yourself, okay, if there are women around, what can we talk about that'll get one of them to join in? It's gotta be something lighthearted, something kinda stimulating in terms of opinions. You know? Like is kissing cheating? Or who lies more? Men or women? Those sorts of topics tend to stir up strong opinions and people love sharing them. Plus, it's all in good fun, not like diving into politics or religion. It's the kind of stuff that women can easily jump into. So baiting a woman into eavesdropping is a solid way to get her to come over and start chatting with you. Moving on to the second thing I'd suggest, positioning. What I mean by that is you've got to set yourself up in a way that makes it easy for the woman to come up and talk to you. For example, if you're at a party and you're chilling in the far corner, well now she's got to muster up the courage to trek all the way over there just to see you. So let's say you're at a bar, the same deal applies. If you're posted up in the back with your buddies, she's got to do that awkward walkover, right? We all know how cringy that can be. You don't want to make it tough for her. What you want to do instead, in any social setting you're in, is find that prime real estate. At a bar, that's usually up near the bar itself, chatting with the bartender. You know she's going to have to come up there eventually, so when she does, you're already there, making it super easy for her to strike up a conversation. 
back in my college days. You know? When I hit up a ton of parties, I'd always volunteer to pump the cake. Why? Cause I knew sooner or later, the girls would swing by to fill up their cups, and it'd be the perfect chance to break the ice. Whether it's beer pong, flip cup, or just some good old drinking games, the bottom line is this. You want to make it as effortless as possible for them to strike up a conversation. So think about it. It could be near the bathroom. You know? Cause sooner or later, they're gonna make the trip. And if you're just hanging out there, it's a breeze for her to strike up a convo. Always gotta think. How can I make it easy? Where can I be that'll make it effortless for her? Cause let's face it, us guys, we're not big on taking risks. And women? They're even less into it. So the smoother you can make it for her, the better. Let's talk about interesting items. This is something I touched on earlier when I mentioned opinion openers. Back in the day, if you've ever watched that show, The Pickup Artist, where they teach guys how to be. They talked about this concept called peacocking. It's all about wearing stuff that makes you stand out. Now they took it to the extreme, dressing like rock stars with all sorts of flashy gear and big cowboy boots. I don't think you gotta go that far. But from my experience, just having a few items that catch the eye can pique a woman's interest and maybe even get her to approach you. Let me share a little anecdote from back in the day. I had this homemade necklace with my name spelled out, kinda like a kid's craft project. Sounds silly, I know, but it did the trick. Almost every time I went out, a woman would come up to me like, Hey, what's with the necklace? Did you make it yourself, or did your nephew whip it up? It was childish, yeah, but it always got the conversation rolling. I also had this interesting ring and a funky watch at one point. Now the rest of my outfit was pretty neutral, nothing too outlandish. I'd always pick one or two items that stood out, cause again, you're just giving her something to latch onto. Then there's scent. It could be a cologne or just something unique that smells good. Women pick up on that stuff and they'll come over like, hey, you smell nice. What's that you're wearing? It's all about giving her an excuse to break the ice. That's the whole point of all these little tricks, making it easy for her to be the one to kickstart the conversation with you. Here's the deal. Anything you can wear, whether it's a cool piece of jewelry, something interesting, or even a nice scent, like a cologne or a beachy fragrance, these things always work like magic. They give women the perfect excuse to come up and break the ice with you. Let's talk about another key move. You gotta be the one leading the room, especially in social settings or even at work. If you're the quiet dude chilling in the corner, not too many women are gonna feel inspired to make the first move. But if you're right in the thick of it, chatting with folks, having a good time, it makes it way easier for her to come up and talk to you. She sees you as social, not intimidating. Trust me, I know what it's like. I was a natural introvert myself. People have told me I look mad or unapproachable, but that's just me lost in my own thoughts. For a woman, though if she sees you being all chatty and in the center of things, she's more likely to think, hey, that guy's friendly, I can go chat with him. It's not gonna feel weird or like she'll get rejected. Here's the deal. You gotta be mindful of that. If you're at a party, be the dude who's mingling, chatting with different folks. At the bar? Strike up conversations with the bartenders and when others come over, keep the chat going. It takes the pressure off her, makes it way easier for her to initiate a convo with you. Now let's talk about the final move, something a lot of guys overlook. It's all about the smile, eye contact, and gesture. Picture this. You're at a party or a bar, you spot a woman you're interested in. We've all been there, right? You lock eyes and then what? Well, typically we either go over and send her a drink or start a conversation, which hey, that's cool and all, but that's not what we're focusing on here. We're talking about getting her to come to you. See what often happens is we make that eye contact, hope she'll come over, but she's doing the same thing, waiting for us. So here's the kicker. Instead of just waiting around, you flash her a smile, make eye contact, and with a subtle gesture, like a nod or a wave, you signal her to come over. Now she's walking up to you, and you can start the conversation with something like, Hey, I saw you looking at me, thought we'd say hi. By doing this you're flipping the script. It looks like she approached you because she made eye contact but you're the one who called her over. Trust me this move has worked plenty of times. Let's break it down. These things, they're crucial when you're out and about, especially if you're not the type to just strut up to someone. But here's the deal, it doesn't mean you can slack off in the conversation department. You gotta be able to keep things flowing when she comes up to you. Let me tell you a story. A few years back, I was at this party and out of nowhere, this girl walks up, plants one on my lips, and says I'm cute. Sounds great, right? Well I froze up, 
had no idea what to say and ended up tanking the conversation. She got bored and walked off. Crazy, right? That's why the real key here is being able to kick off a flirty, fun chat. So when she does come up to you, you don't blow it. So give these tips a shot, okay? They're not going to turn you into a chick magnet overnight, but they'll definitely nudge a woman with even a tiny bit of interest to make that first move. See you next time. Bye.